here we're gonna talk about because like oh girl has been through <laughs> oh girl still got something that she's still <laughs> working for How much you have to love someone to give your life, life right? for that person. I'm telling you. And like, I was reading just yesterday the book of John chapter 10, and it says like, he, Christ was like, I lay my life down willingly. Nobody takes, nobody, he said, nobody has the authority to take my life. I lay it down willingly. And to realize that like, Christ chose mm -hmm. to lay his life down for me. And like, um, I just, there's just something that is just so beautiful about that. Realizing that like, when he was on that cross, he saw me. Mm. Like, he saw Tony, he saw Sarah. He yeah. was like, I'm dying for my daughter. I always had this thing where I just always felt like, and I think it, it kind of connects back to my insecurity of like my physical appearance, right? Mm -hmm. Where I felt like I would never be like good enough like for a guy. You know, so like I had that like thing in me where I just always felt like a guy would not love me for who I am. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was this guy that I had like a crush on for like, five years uh, like, you know that i mean i don't know i guess it might have always been me but i had that like crush on the, he, the guy went to my church and i just had like the biggest crush on him like forever mm -hmm. and i remember one day um we were all just hanging out like all the youth of my church we're all hanging out and i wore this like striped shirt and he made a comment and he was like oh you shouldn't wear stripes it just makes you look so fat right uh, right he said and, that he said that. <laughs> he said that so that was like a double double bullet oh you my know, like, gosh because number one it hit me my insecurity that i already had mm -hmm. over my physical appearance because i i was already struggling with my weight i think i was like 13 or 14 at the time and so i was like oh my god like now i look fat right mm -hmm. and then now this guy that i've liked for like since i was like age 10 or whatever whatever yeah. like now he says i look fat and then like, oh my God, he probably doesn't like me because of my physical appearance. Yeah. And I carried that throughout like the rest of my teenage, like my teenage years and even college where I just always felt like I would never, I wasn't pretty enough to be mm. the girl that the guy liked. And because I was like the nerd most of the time, I still also then felt like I was never the girl that the guy picked. So then when I now transition to like, let's say like at the end of college when I'm like actually now gonna start dating and looking for guys and stuff I didn't know how to like just be told me with a guy right because I felt like throughout my whole life like I felt like guys didn't like me for who I was mm. so now I'm at the age where I'm allowed to date now and like you know talk to guys but I was so like you see how my personality is I was yeah. like that back then but with like my friends like my female friends mm. but when it came to a guy I would just totally shut down I was oh. so quiet you would think you'll be like oh she doesn't talk ever because like I just didn't know I didn't know how to be myself you yeah. know what I mean because and like you thought yourself wasn't good enough exactly I was. I was not yeah. good enough and like always like what do I have to offer God other than the fact that like I guess I'm just smart do you know what I mean yeah. like I didn't plan to be a doctor like that's like the only thing but like I'm not the prettiest in the room I'm not the skinniest in the room I'm not the you know whatever my weave was not always the best you know when I was in college you know, so I was just like, I didn't think, and I didn't realize how much that affected me until I moved to the island for medical school. And I remember um, there's there this guy that this is a Nigerian guy, of course, moved to the island. <laughs> <laughs> you know, came and um, he was so handsome. I mean, the man is nice, and I'm so mad. You know, so men are just like, so God just for me. He's a handsome guy, like, he's like 6'4, and I'm like bald and bearded, as you can see. Like, I'm oh, bald and bearded. He was bald and bearded. And, you know, just like my ideal person. And every girl that was like, and we had a lot of Africans like in our school, like all the minority population was like African. So, and everybody liked this guy when he moved to the island. Yeah. And so it was like, oh, I wonder who he's gonna talk to. Like, we were like high school, oh, kids, yes. right? You're like, and, like everybody was like, comes. yeah, when the new guy comes, right? And so he started talking to me, right? And so he and I like. Yeah, we like started dating or whatever. And I remember one, this one girl, some Ghanaian girl, comes up to me and she was like, you know, I just don't understand why he chose you. But, and what she didn't realize is that she was like bringing that thing out in me again, where it was like, yeah, like why did he pick me? Cause like, I'm not the cutest, I'm not the this, I'm not the that. So then I then even started acting awkward even around him again, because I didn't know, I was like, yeah, like how do I behave? I'm like, maybe I need to go lose weight. Maybe I need to go. And I would go on these like crazy fad diets yeah. because I felt like I needed to lose weight for the guy to like me. I needed to do this for the guy to like me. I just, I had to like consume 
conceal parts of myself for a guy to like me. I, I couldn't talk because I, I, mean, I grew up heavily in the church, like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I couldn't talk so much about Jesus so the guy wouldn't think I'm like, you know? So it was like, I was always like, Racking my brain, like you might be, imagine being on a date and you're racking your brain that like, hard just oh, to yeah. just to know what, what to say next or what, what not to say. Like, 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 like should I like, like you know? And it's like I was so uncomfortable with guys. You know what I mean? So of course that relationship didn't work. And then even the one the relationships and or situationships I would call some of them that I was in even afterwards, I I struggled so much. Like I remember one of the guys, he was just like, oh, like what told me am I even seeing? You know, he asked me that question and it was so true because I didn't know how to just like present my natural self and be okay with it. And I think part of it was because I was struggling to accept myself. Do you know what I mean? I was struggling to accept myself that I am the pleasantly plump Tommy, you know, who is a nerd, who is a Christian, who is okay to talk about Jesus in whatever environment, who is, may not have the best weave at all times, but is going to look decent, you know what I mean, or whatever, you know, but like, you look good, you know, you know, you look good. Like, this is me, but I struggle to really love myself, and I think that's like, that was like the fundamental problem that I didn't realize until like, I was like about age 27-ish, that like, the pro- it was after my dad passed away that I realized that I was struggling to truly love Tommy for Tommy. And I think it was because I, after my dad passed away, I was like now in a very, very dark phase. And now the only man that I've ever loved, like in human form, was like now gone, right? Mm-hmm. And so now I felt so like, well, now my daddy is gone. And like who, who, what man is going to love me now? For me. For me. Yes. Like daddy loved me for all of it. But now that one person is gone. And like, is there going to be another man to just love me for who I am? And I struggled so much in that I was already also struggling with like losing him. So like dealing with the depression of losing my father and then having all these other realities like now hit me as well. It was just a lot, you know. But again, I feel like that was like another one of those phases of my life where God reintroduced himself to me. You know what I mean? And like, I, I remember I was so depressed in that time frame. I, and then I ate my way through my depression. So I actually gained like... 35 pounds in that time frame um, because I was just eating and just, I mean, that was the heaviest I ever was in my life because, like, food was, like, my comfort, you know? And I remember one night, it was my sister-in-law who called me because everybody just knew, like, told me was off. I wasn't talking about God no more. I wasn't, I was just so angry with life and I was so discontented with myself, too, you know? And I, she called me one night and she was like, you know, tell me, we, a lot of us are just very concerned about you we know how how daddy's death affected you but we don't want you to stay at this point and she told me that she was going to join me in a, a fast to just pray and you know and so i was like okay whatever i mean even though like then i was like because i was so like apathetic to everything yes, at that time I and i was just like what doesn't even matter and then i also gained all that way i was like well no guy really will want me anywhere anyway so i just didn't really like care anymore and i remember going into that fast not really having any expectation but i was actually at work on um I think it was the second day of the fast. I was reading Jeremiah chapter 31. And um, I read it. I love the NLT version. And there's a verse there that says, you will be happy again. And I read that verse and I just burst out crying at work. I didn't even care who was there. I just burst out crying in my office there. And I cried for like an hour because I had realized so much how like the joy and the contentment of life and of just being okay with just me was just gone. I I hated just being with just myself and I was with just myself at that in that time frame. But I feel like after that day, like I cried it all out and I realized that like no number one, I will be happy again. And number one, like yeah, the only man that I thought that loved me for me is now gone, but God loves me. Mm, right? Yes. And it was like the first time in my life where again as an adult I, I had to let the love of God embrace me when human love could not embrace me yes. and I think that God needed me to go through that season of my life because I needed to understand that his love tr- like transcends all you know? That's true. and the love of a yeah. man a man can in no way substitute that love or even mimic that love to me because it's it's impossible like he's God right yeah. and so God took me through this journey I was in a relationship at the time I broke up with the guy didn't even realize I was depressed he was oh so, my god he was so That's oblivious terrible. oh my god I, the day I broke up with him he was so shocked and I was like bro why are you so shocked <laughs> like, I was like why are you shocked and he was like I didn't even realize well, why? Realize, like, this is exactly why. Like, you know, his communication skills were so poor. Oh, uh, like God. so, so poor. Like, oh my God. And I just had to tell him, like, I just need to focus on myself. You know what I mean? And um, I, I, God took me through a year and a half journey mm-hmm. of 
showing me his love mm -hmm. and showing me how much he loves me he's content with me mm -hmm. he loves me at my biggest at my smallest at whatever no matter what outfit i'm wearing no matter whether i'm wearing makeup or not wearing makeup whether i'm smart or i'm not smart whether i pass an exam i don't pass like he loves me through every single season mm -hmm. and i think that once i was able to get to a point where i was able to bask in that love like truly embrace the love of god mm -hmm. i was now able to really love tony like i love me yeah, <laughs> you should. i really love me but i feel like i just got to that point yeah. of like loving me and when i say that like literally all of this started like the end of 2019 plus the beginning of the pandemic where i was like wow like i'm i'm okay now like you know what i mean yeah. like i'm okay with being tony and that's why it was so pivotal for me like when i started posting those videos on instagram because yes. i was so afraid to do that because i was like that's letting people see me as just like me yes you know what i mean i had been wanting to do something like that for a very long time but i just couldn't do it yeah. but i got off of instagram for like three months and in that three months though yeah the first three months of 2020 like i was just off i was, I was just yeah to focus on the lord and just like and i did like a three month like my my friend and i were doing like daily prayers and everything like that and i feel like in that time frame god just he reintroduced himself to me and just made me realize how amazing of a man he is like mm -hmm. god you know and realizing that like he is our first lover he is truly the one that he embraces all of us you know and if you read the book of genesis chapter 3 the bible says the man and woman were naked and they were unashamed right? yes and you know how the bible that's always, true like, symbolic yeah of christ and mm -hmm. the bride right that's actually one of my favorite chapters right favorite and so wait when you look at that and the lord is saying that like i am not ashamed of you the same way yeah. that like i am your i am the the groomsman in this situation you are my mm -hmm. bride and i am not ashamed of you there's nothing about you that that should make you ashamed yeah. of of just being in my presence and i feel like yeah. when i was able to get to the point where i was free to be me in god's presence um that's where my freedom came from that one yeah. and that's where like that's how i feel like this one is the one where like i don't struggle with it as much it creeps up a little bit here and there but i think god needed me to get to this point also before i met me you know like my fiance now because um god needed me to realize that like a man's love is not gonna be what makes me content or gives me joy or peace Yes. Like my contentment with Tommy, my content, my joy in just being who God has called me to be comes only from him. Not in a man accepting me. Not from me. anything. You know what I mean? I but like rather from like him. God accepting me. Mm -hmm. God accepting who I am because he created me this way. Yeah. You know, and he is so pleased with how he made me because he made me in his image. And I feel like once I was able to get to that point, now when I met my fiance, it's been such a, an amazing journey right because i knew who i was in christ oh, that's beautiful like i just i knew who i was in christ and I, I know who i am in christ and like meeting a man who number one accepted that too and he embraced it he encouraged it you know what i mean but like i was able to present tony as tony and be okay with it and not question whether or not he's going to be like oh she talked she's always talking about god or she's always yeah. like yeah why does she yeah. want to pray why she i remember one guy i was talking to when i first started doing these videos and he was like yeah but like he was like you're always like too excited in your videos like when you're talking about like and i was like oh, do you know who man. god is right like <laughs> Um, are we talking? Are we worshiping the same God? Because yes. like obviously there is something I'm missing here. Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Like why should I not be excited about talking about, about God? God. Yeah. You know, and like the way He made it seem, it almost made it feel like I was doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, but I still managed that situation ship for a yeah. while because I was like, okay, maybe I need to dumb myself down. No. And I think we do that sometimes in different areas when we feel if we feel like oh the guy or the girl whichever side is like not accepting like okay maybe i need to shield this side of myself or hide it a little mm -hmm. bit or dumb it down so that like no you That's need to still be you you. Yeah. you know what i mean like and if that person cannot accept you as you you, mm -hmm. then that's just not the person it can't be like it just cannot be because, because are you gonna live the rest of your life dumbing yourself down and some people do that yeah. and that's why the divorce rate is so high yeah. because you enter a relationship as the person that you are not mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. why would you do that and, and that's just something that i had just promised myself after i realized how great i am and i say that in the most as humbly as I can say mm -hmm. that not because I think I'm all that no but just because God has showed me that through him I am great 
Yes. Like I am great because of him. And yeah. it is and it's okay for me as a child of God to realize that. Or rely on his grace, acknowledge his grace, acknowledge him as the source of all. Mm -hmm. And realize that it's okay to be that. Yes. It's okay to be that. It is okay to be everything that God has mm -hmm. called you to be and to be unashamed of it. My father in heaven is unashamed of it. So why should I be worried about a man not accepting 